Chelsea Football Club are rejected by Victor Ossiman according to French reports from Fabrice Hawkins. However, Fabrizio Romano comes out and says that's not true. Saudi Arabia and Chelsea both want him. The story is deeper than just that. Chelsea, on the other hand, have started talks with another striker instead of Victor Ossiman. They're telling Napoli, we'll go in for him and Ivan Toni will happily come to us. Saudi Arabia is not his only option. Furthermore, Dan Ashworth, the director of football of Manchester United has met with Chelsea. Why? Well, it's that swap deal invo involving Jadon Sancho and Ornstein has his say as well. And I'm telling you now, for those of you that don't want Chelsea to sign Jadon Sancho, you need to start getting worried. Chelsea signed another goalkeeper in Penders and I'm going to tell you why this is a good decision and how this signing isn't starting now, but why he's starting next year. And more so, <laughs> the news doesn't end there. You got Trevor Chalaba potentially being reintegrated back into the squad because the Sassy could be leaving. Dominic Calvert-Lewin being tied to Armando Breuer and why that deal could happen. Why are we looking at Dominic Calvert-Lewin? And finally, we've got an updates on four players' futures because the deals are almost done. Yes, it is a jam-packed video. Yes, I'm going to be here most probably for 20 minutes giving you the news that you need. So now that you have got your attention, what I need from you guys, the regulars that watch on a regular basis, hit that like button. Like I said, it's like washing your hands, right? You come home from work, first thing you do is you wash your hands. Hit that like button. Secondly, if you're new and you made it this far, you need to subscribe as well, because clearly I'm giving you some entertainment that you like. So, 2,000 likes on this video, new subscriptions, let's get started. We have got a lot to talk about today, so I'm gonna try and wrap it up and give you some of your time back, but you're clearly enjoying this content when you made it this far. Victor Osime at Chelsea, it is very, very interesting. So yesterday, news came out from La Parisienne, the uh, newspaper, as well as Fabrice Hawkins, that has reiterated that Victor Osime is not very excited about the possibility of joining Chelsea. They are saying that he's more open to the idea of going back to France and playing for PSG. First of all, this makes sense. Why does it make sense? PSG will pay him the wages that Chelsea won't. Chelsea are not going to give him his 300K net, meaning his gross wages are nearly 500K a week. They are not going to give him that. Like, and Chelsea, on the other hand, they've said on many occasions, we're not giving you that kind of money. You either fall in line with everyone else, and only we're in, when we're in the Champions League, you're gonna get inflated wages. So I don't blame him for not wanting to go. I personally don't want him, but that's just me. However, Fabrizio Romano has come out and said, look, Chelsea and Saudi are his only options. PSG are not interested. PSG do not want to get this deal done. PSG believe they've got enough in their locker and Luis Enrique is not interested in the player. This is getting very messy and I'm, I said it yesterday, I'm gonna say it again. Victor Osime, you will need to sack your agent if this deal does not come through. There is no circumstances you, a player of your magnitude, a player of your talent, should be cornered in a situation when only Chelsea and Saudi Arabian clubs are willing to bid money. For. This is absolutely absolutely comical and honestly for those of you that don't know how I how much I rate the player at the end of the video I'll give you a link where I talk about his strengths and his weakness and because a lot of people say you don't rate him at all you think he's crap I don't think he's crap I think he's a very good player I just don't think he's as good as you tell me he is but now on to the next story and what Chelsea put out there but what Chelsea have done now is Chelsea basically told Napoli oh you know what you want to put briefs out there you want to start saying that Victor Rossi may not come to us no problem we'll look at Ivan Tony. yes Ivan Tony, a 27 year old England international has got an offer from Saudi Arabia I think it's out they're offering him um, 20 million euros a year to go there for three years. The player is seriously considering it. However, Chelsea, according to Sky Cava and Sky Sports News, have spoken to the, uh, the player's representatives and have inquired if there's a possibility of getting him across to the club. Now we need to talk about Victor Osimhen versus Ivan Tony because this is a genuine question, right? A lot of you aren't gonna like that I said this is a genuine question because I've broken it down into five set the segments, right? Link up play. I think Ivan Tony has the better link up play. I think Ivan Tony is better with his feet, his ability to bring other people in and around him into the game. Wonderful. Attacking prowess in the final third with their athleticism. Victor Osimhen is a better athlete than Ivan Tony. He can press better, he's more organized, he's an all-round better attacker with his movement and finesse. The next segment is finishing. I think Tony is a better finisher than Victor Rossime. Proven factor, 
I think whilst Victor Osimhen has got great experience around European leagues and the Champions League, Chelsea are going to get a player that has done really well in the Premier League. I don't, so now you need to ask yourself, what means more to you? An individual that's played longer in top flight football and has Champions League experience or a player that has played in the Premier League? For me, it doesn't matter. I never look at those two things. And the final thing that I think you need to consider is age and attitude. I think both players believe their own. This is the truth. I think Victor Asime wants to be felt special. I think he wants to be the main man and Ivan Tony what does. And they're strikers. This is normal. This is how they're meant to feel. The one question I have now is what do you do if you bring one of those two in with Nicholas Jackson? Because Nico's got the exact same ego. Like he believes he is phenomenal and you know what in his head he's 21 22 years old and he's somebody that scored 15 league goals in his debut season why shouldn't he feel like this in his head he's going to score 20 this year and if he's given the same amount of minutes he's going to excel Chelsea need to decide which player they're going to go for personally what I think is happening now is Chelsea won Victor Seaman but they only want him on their terms and conditions this Ivan Tony is a smokescreen they're not interested in Ivan Tony if they wanted Ivan Tony Ivan Tony would be a Chelsea player right now because the Ivan Tony deal has been there since May genuinely Brentford put 50 million on his head if Chelsea wanted to negotiate that fee down they could have that's just my personal opinion I want to know yours Tony or Ossiman, which one would you pick? What do Chelsea not need? Another forward player. Genuinely, apart from a number nine, Chelsea do not need another 10. They don't need a seven, nor do they need an 11. What are Chelsea trying to do? Well, Chelsea now have found an an opportunistic signing. We know Chelsea love those, right? Ever since Blue Coat have come in, all you've ever heard from my mouth is, this is an opportunistic signing. This isn't a signing that's gonna improve the first team. This is an opportunistic signing. This could be meaning for financial purposes in the future. It's really annoying when you think about it that way. But this is exactly what it is. Chelsea have had talks with Dan Ashworth, who is the director of football at Manchester United, regarding the Jadon Sancho deal. This has been confirmed by David Ornstein as well that talks have been held. The Times initially gave the name Dan Ashworth. David Ornstein has reiterated that talks have been held. What talks have been held? Chelsea are exploring the possibility of taking Jadon Sancho in a straight swap for Raheem Sterling. My problem for your problem. We spoke about this yesterday. It doesn't make much sense. I don't believe this could happen. However, when Ornstein starts coming out with um, articles on it. it there's, there's legs to it. I have to talk about it. And what I don't understand is what happens to Mikhail Mud. Neto will play 100%. He's the new signing. You've got Joao Felix who's come in who can play 100%. Cole Palmer's our best player. Nani Madweke is on fire and he's completely different to everybody apart from Neto. So he's going to play. Jaden Sancho's of a similar mold to Cole Palmer, to Felix. Somebody that doesn't rely on athleticism but more so his skill set, right? His ability on the ball, his vision, his touch, his quality. Where, what happens to Mudrik? What happens to Christopher Nkunku? This is what I'm, I'm asking everybody. What do you do with this many bodies? The only way I can see this move happening is if you bring in Jaden Sancho, Mudrik leaves, and Nkunku and Jackson are your number nines, Felix plays as a number nine, false nine, Cole Palmer plays as a false nine, and then we proceed from there. The only way, and you have to get Raheem Sterling to Manchester United and Ben Chilwell out off the wage books. Personally, I don't want us to do this deal. I genuinely think just wait and find another way to get these lot off the books. Genuinely. You don't need Jadon Sancho. It doesn't make sense for Chelsea, nor does it make sense for Jadon Sancho. Jadon Sancho is too good of a player to be a fifth or sixth choice. That's why he's not happy at Manchester United. He wants to play football. The next story is a completed move for a 19-year-old goalkeeper called Penders. Penders is an, a Belgian under 21 international. He's a player that is starting for Genk at the moment and where have we heard this before? Chelsea signed uh, Thibaut Courtois from Genk and loaned him out straight away and I remember he was there on loan for one year then he went on loan for two years to Atletico Madrid coming back and regaining the spot as the number one goalkeeper at 
Chelsea Football Club. Chelsea have announced this deal. However, this deal will not go on this year's financial accounts. It'll go for next year's. So we paid 17 million pounds for a 19 year old goalkeeper. He is six foot seven, if I'm not mistaken. Decent with his feet. I saw somebody describe his shot saving abilities very similar to Petr Cech in the sense that he uses his legs like the hockey saves a lot. He comes and claims cross as well. However, what I'm going to say is he's playing men's football right now for a team in Genk that's going to hopefully have a good season. We'll keep tabs on him, but he's not one for now. He's not one to get excited about. He's one to next year, when the preseason comes around, we're gonna see Penders, we're gonna see Anson Mino, we're gonna see Estevao, and we're gonna see Kendry Pais come in, and that feels like four new signings straight away. But the reality is then, if Chelsea achieve what we want them to achieve this year, those players are going to be squad players next year, and some of them are even gonna get loans. So let's calm our expectations down and be realistic about what's happening and focus on the team at present construction and worry about the future later on and get excited about the future later so what I saw today from The Athletic, I straight away said this doesn't make sense. However, I have to report it to you guys because this could become a reality. We've seen this happen with Trevor Chalaba before and most probably history can repeat itself. What happened last year? Last year, Chelsea tried to get Trevor Chalaba to leave. Trevor Chalaba did not leave. Trevor Chalaba refused to leave and rejected a move to Nottingham Forest. Since that standpoint, Trevor Chalaba has actively broke back into the Chelsea team and been excluded again because Chelsea are trying to force him out. Now, The Athletic is reporting there is a possibility for Trevor Chalobah to come back into the first team at Chelsea Football Club if Axel de Sassi leaves the club. Let me tell you one thing now. I've read the Athletic article. It is an opinion based. This is not an article that is saying this is going to happen. This is what we've been told is gonna happen. It is opinion based. So if De Sassi leaves, Chalaba will take his slot and become the fifth choice centre half at Chelsea Football Club. What I'm going to tell you is, whilst it's a decent opinion, I don't agree with it. Just because I don't agree with it doesn't mean it's wrong, but I'm going to tell you my reasoning for not agreeing with it. Chelsea have got two clear first choice centre halves. It is Levi Kowal on the left hand side, left footed, on the right hand side, Wesley Fofana. It's clear as day, they're the first choice. Tusanada Rubio has been purchased. And he is the third choice center half alongside Benoit Badiashile. Whether we can get rid of Benoit Badiashile or we should get rid of ba Badiashile, that's another question. But it looks like because of his left foot, because of the hype about around him, he is the uh, left side of center half that will be covering Levi Colwell. De Sassi has not been anywhere in sight. He's literally had a hernia operation. Since then, he's had one 90 minutes against Sevet. I don't even think he played 90 minutes. He played 80 minutes and that's it. If we can shift him, I think they're gonna try shift to Sassi and they're gonna try shift Trevor at the same time. And the, what they're gonna do alongside it is bring through Josh Achimpong. That is the logical move. In my opinion, if you want to keep Trevor Chalaba, try and move uh, Badi Ashile. I'm ready to move Badi Ashile because like I said the other day, I was all aboard the Badi Ashile train. I thought it was phenomenal. The problem is, is we've seen nearly 18 months of bad. When I see that period of bad form, is no longer this guy's uh, in bad reign of form. It's, there, there are serious issues here. And if we can get our money back, Let's get our money back and just move on and let him go and play somewhere and develop himself. But that's just my personal opinion. This is the cost of having such a bloated squad. You can't give anyone too much time because there are other players that are ready to step up and take the opportunity. The other story that has come out that has really triggered me and I hope it's not true because genuinely, if this story is true, I'm gonna have steam coming out of my ears. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is linked with Chelsea Football Club in an PSR move. What does that mean? It means Chelsea potentially could send Armando Broya to Everton. Everton will agree to pay a significant fee and as a thank you, we take Dominic Calvert-Lewin off their hands and they get pure profit on their accounts as well. I do not want this. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is not the type of player I want at Chelsea Football Club. I don't think he's good enough. I think he's injury prone. I don't think he ever was good enough and he does not fit the criteria of what we need at Chelsea Football Club. Furthermore, a lot of you are going to say, why is the Broya deal not working out with Ipswich? Well, they found something in his medical with it to do with his Achilles that they're not happy about. Kieran McKenna said they're exploring possibilities, the deal's not off, but they're going to see how 
to make this deal work. The reality is it's about getting the fee to be lower. If that can happen, we will get rid of it. Now I'm gonna give you a quick wrap up of all the news that has happened with the four players that I mentioned that the deals are either very close or the deals are about to have been completed as well because Chelsea are gonna have a very few busy days coming up until Friday close of business. And it's gonna be very busy on the channel so make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the like button and you're engaged. Let's get into it. So for those of you that don't know, Leo Casadine, I think he's a number like nine forward. Like I've seen him play a few times at under 21 level uh, in highlight games, never 90 minute games. He looks interesting, very explosive, very decent on the ball, loves a good strike. Always played next to David Washington. Um, very interesting player. Well, he's gone on loan to Shrewsbury. Not Strawberry like uh, Eden Hazard's called them that. Drop an emoji of a strawberry in a comment if you made it this far and you remember that as well. But he's gone on loan. There's no option to buy. It's one of those where he's going to go and develop. Chelsea will monitor what's going on with his career and then we'll, go, we'll see what happens next. Romelu Lukaku is going to be in Napoli or Naples tomorrow. He's going to have a medical with what's it called Napoli. What has happened is... The last few days, the fee has been agreed. It's 30 million euros, 15 million in add-ons, 30% of a sell-on fee if the player gets sold on from Napoli. But, and this is the big but, there was some discussion over his image rights. The image rights discussions is concluded now. He is going to go across the Napoli to have a medical. Like I've said, deals aren't done until that medical was signed on the dot and the then he's holding a t-shirt up. So don't get too excited. We could be getting a little downfall, but we could be getting Romelu Lukaku off the books. Next one's Kepa Aritha Balaga. Kepa signed a one-year extension at Chelsea Football Club and gone on loan to Bournemouth. Why has he done that? Well, Chelsea most probably wanted to extend that to amortize his deal uh, for another year then get the wages off their books and most probably fund some of the wages themselves. And he's going to Bournemouth to Areola, who he's been, who he knows from in the past. He's going to play for him again. And this is a positive move for Kepa, right? He's going to go to sunny Bournemouth. There's a beach there. Madrid don't have one of those, you know what I mean? So he's winning there in life. But the reality is he wasn't going to make it at Chelsea. Chelsea don't want him part of the squad. He doesn't want to play for Chelsea. So it's a matter of just getting him off the books. He's going to go to Bournemouth, play a lot of football, hopefully resurrect his career. And when Lunin leaves next year, he can most probably go and be Real Madrid's backup goalkeeper because that's exactly what he wants. He's been waiting for it all summer, but Lunin didn't give him a chance. Didn't you ain't get no chance. And finally, the last one with, with Tino Andrin. Tino Andrin has passed his medical with Empoli. It's, about, it's a matter of the deal getting announced. Fabrizio Romano has officially confirmed it. And like I said to you guys the other day, this is one of those feel-good stories where his injuries have impacted him, but he's still going to have an illustrious career at a great club in Serie A. So good luck to him. But this is the latest news. Today was a long one. So for those of you that made it this far, drop yourselves a like button in the comments below. And more importantly, go over here and watch more Kafka's View where I tell you guys the strengths and weaknesses of Victor Asime and why I potentially would want to sign him, but under these conditions. So let's get into it. See you around.